So, hello everyone. I'm Hongyi Zhang, and I'm here to present our paper, First Order Methods on Geodesically Convex Optimization. This is joint work with Surya Tsua. So, in data science and machine learning, optimization problems with structured nonlinear constraints appear in many scenarios. Remarkably, they can often be viewed as unconstrained optimization on remaining manifolds. So, for example, for orthogonal, orthogonality constraint corresponds to a stiff L manifold, which appears in principal component analysis and the canonical correlation analysis. Fixed strand constraint corresponds to a Grassmann manifold, which appears in low rank matrix factorization and completion. And the positive semi definite constraint co corresponds to PSD manifold, which appears in covariance matrix estimation and learning elliptical contour distribution, as well as learning mixture models. Despite the removal of nonlinear constraints, non asymptotic convergence data analysis for remaining optimization algorithms has been missing in the literature due to the difficulty posed by the nonlinear remaining metric. In this work, for the first time, we established the non asymptotic convergence rate for remaining for a rich class of remaining optimization algorithms. So we make two main contributions in this work. The first is we establish a square distance bound on remaining manifold, which generalizes the Euclidean law of cosines. And then we use this lemma to, to prove the non asymptotic convergence rate results for a uh, Remaining optimization, first order remaining optimization algorithms. But first, let's start with some background. So, how does the remaining optimization algorithm work? Well, it works roughly the same as a vector space optimization algorithm. But instead of adding the vector v to a vector x, we take the exponential map to map the vector v in x tangent space to another point on the manifold. The inverse exponential map, sorry, the inverse exponential map, if it exists, corresponds to sub vector subtraction, y minus x. Lengths, angles, differentiation, integration, gradient, subgradient, hessian, and vector translation can all be rigorously defined on Riemannian manifold. We thus know how to extrapolate a vector space optimization algorithm to Riemannian optimization. Moreover, function classes can also be generalized. In, a ve in vector space, when we say a function is convex or Lipschitz, we mean that it's convex or Lipschitz with respect to the linear metric we use. Similarly, these definitions can generalize to Riemannian manifold if we speak respect with respect to the nonlinear Riemannian metric. Thus, we can talk about uh, function classes on Riemannian manifolds, which are geodesically convex geodesically Lipschitz, geodesically strongly convex, or geodesically smooth. In this work, we focus on the study of a subset of remaining optimization problems, which is geodesically convex, where we aim to minimize the uh, geodesically convex function f over a geodesically convex set x, assuming the, f assuming the, ex assuming the excess of a first order oracle. In particular, we are interested in the global complexity of first-order geodesically convex optimization on remaining manifold. Such global complexity results are a major part of the great success of convex optimization theory, while they remain almost completely missing in nonlinear space. So our work is a first step to close the huge gap between convex optimization and uh, the re this remaining optimization. So to, to begin with, uh, our key insight is that we need something similar to the Euclidean law of cosines to hold on remaining manifold. The Euclidean law of cosines is able to bound the squared distance between the current iterate and the minimizer. And it is often used as the first step for any uh, non asymptotic convergence rate analysis in convex optimization. So, however, in, on a Riemannian manifold, such a, a Euclidean law of cosine doesn't hold. Instead, 
uh, we have the hyperbolic law of cosines or uh, the spher spherical law of cosines for space of constant curvature. But even in this very restricted setting, it is not obvious at all how to get a meaningful uh, upper bound on the square distance. So in addition, we use a uh, Topinogov theorem, which is a comparison theorem from metric geometry, and Granov Wall's inequality, which is a comparison theorem from differential equations. When we put these three things together, we are able to bound the square distance uh, between the vertices of any geodesic triangle in any geodesically convex set on a manifold where the sectional curvature is lower bounded. So here, kappa mean is the uh, sectional curvature lower bound. And A and B are respectively the distance from the current iterate or the previous iterate to the minimizer. So now we compare this inequality with the Euclidean law of cosines. First, note that in nonlinear space, we have an inequality. And second, note that we pay the additional price of data. So how much is the data price? If uh, both kappa mean and b are bounded and either goes towards zero, then data goes towards one. So we pay no additional price. On the other hand, if the numerator is much greater than one, then we pay zeta price, which is approximately equal to the numerator. So using this one lemma, we are able to generalize many convex optimization uh, results to re the remaining setting. So we, uh, we prove that, uh, so including, um, including gradient or subgradient methods for a variety of function classes uh, in both batch and stochastic settings. So uh, first note that uh, the conversion rate for different spaces have the same dependency on the number of iterations t. Second, note that the conversion rates also depend on the lower, uh, on zeta max, which in turn depends on the sectional curvature lower bound and the diameter of the geodesically convex set. So to summarize, we studied first-order geodesically convex optimization on remaining manifolds. And to, towards this end, we proved a, a square distance lemma, which generalized the Euclidean law of cosines. And we used this lemma to prove the first global com com complexity results on remaining manifold uh, for remaining optimization algorithm. So our paper is online by this QR code. And if you have any questions, now is a good time to ask. Thank you.